It wasn't too long ago that BlackBerry entered the world of Android with the Priv, a high-end device which retained the iconic physical keyboard, married with high specs and a high price point to match. Now BlackBerry are giving Android another go with a more conventional £280 mid-ranger, which they claim is the most secure Android phone around. Welcome back to Byte Review, now let's see how the BlackBerry DTEC50 holds up. The physical keyboard of the Priv is very much absent here, leaving us with a bit of an Android classic black slab design. However, it's not about its merits. It's impressively thin, coming in at just 7.4mm, has a chamfered metal edge and a really nice grippy backplate, which despite its looks is actually non-removable. That's all topped off nicely with a SIM tray that includes a micro SD card slot, which is great to see as the onboard storage tops out at 16GB. While it's a nice enough design, it's actually a carbon copy of the Alcatel Idol 4, which I assume BlackBerry has the rights to use. Overall design isn't bad at all. It has some annoying features like the power button being on the left, which is the opposite to any other Android phone I've tried in a good while, but it's not taking any risks, which is probably the right move to make at this price point. Moving over to the screen and you'll be more than happy with how the DTEC50 performs. It's a 5.2 inch 1080p IPS panel and it's nice and bright, viewing angles are good as ever, and the overall quality of the screen is very nice. It's actually really difficult to complain about it to be honest. Sure, it's no AMOLED, but it's perfectly good for most of us. A really nice surprise for the DTEC50 was the front facing stereo speakers, which are fantastic for media consumption. They sound pretty good for the most part and get plenty loud enough to show a group of friends a YouTube clip. Just don't expect them to hold up massively at max volume as they can clip. Powering the DTEC50 is a Snapdragon 617 octa-core chip, which is nicely backed up with 3GB of RAM as opposed to an expected 2. For the most part, this keeps the BlackBerry going along relatively smoothly. It can bog down a little when you've got a lot going on, and it's not designed for intensive gaming or power use, but it'll get you through your day-to-day -day with no real issues. Software-wise, BlackBerry's take on Android is slowly becoming one of my favourites. They've been really smart by leaving us with a stock feel with just a few minor changes, the first of which is a redesigned recently opened app drawer, which looks great, and it's mostly down to personal preference on whether you like it or not over the original. Another great feature is the ability to have widgets open directly from an app icon. To get this to work, you simply swipe down on an app icon to see the widget for that app. If that app has more than one widget, you get to pick which one you'd like to see. It's a really interesting and novel approach to widgets, and I found myself making use of it a lot. However, one of my favourite features of the BlackBerry launcher is being able to change your app icons. It seems so simple and stupid, but I think it's a great way of customising your device, and it's nice to not have to change your launcher to do it. Oh, and don't worry, while the physical keyboard is absent here on the BlackBerry, the software keyboard is one of the best too. I found myself getting used to it really quickly and I didn't change it to the Google keyboard like I normally do. The only thing I'm not a fan of is the BlackBerry Hub, which the launcher pushes you to use. While it worked great on BlackBerry's own OS, it feels kind of clunky and forced here in Android. The Hub pulls all of your notifications into one place. It seems like a good idea to start with, but when you get a notification from Gmail saying you have an email, and then the Hub notifies you that you've got an email from Gmail, you'll soon discover why I ended up not using it at all. To make it work correctly, you'd have to switch off notifications for your other apps and trust that the Hub will keep you up to date. Also, when you're in the Hub and want to reply to a tweet or an email, it just boots you back into that specific app. If you could reply in the Hub, it would make sense, like it does in BlackBerry's OS, but it doesn't do that here in Android. BlackBerry have also included a convenience key located on the side, which I often mistook for a power button. The key lets you launch into an app quickly or perform a certain function. It's a good idea and I can see how some people might find it really useful. I've got mine set to note taking for instance, but I found myself barely using it. However, the main feature of this phone is being sold on its security. BlackBerry makes good on this by issuing a security update for Android once a month, making sure you're protected against any malicious threats. This is also coupled with the DTEC software, which gives your phone a rating on how secure it currently is, and gives you tips on how to make it even more secure. This is great for the more privacy minded among us, or if you're a business user, which this is most likely aimed at, but for the most of us you'll find that Android is plenty secure enough. I've said it once before and I'll say it again, I always sigh a little when I hear an Android phone has a 13 megapixel camera because it could literally go any way it wants. Some are great, some are okay, and some are outright rubbish. 
Luckily, the DTEC 50 escapes rubbish and lands somewhere in the OK camp. In good light, details are held on too well and colours have some added punch, but it's nothing you wouldn't want. Focus time has been pretty good across the board as well. It does start showing cracks in lower light as you would expect, and things can get soft and noisy very quickly. Interestingly, the front facing camera is at 8 megapixel of there, and while it doesn't look overly great, it's really, really wide, which is really important and really nice to see. There's always a compromise with a mid-range device, and unfortunately it looks like the battery is the victim of the DTEC 50. It's a 2610mAh cell, and in fairness to it, it got me through most of my testing days with no problems. However, I did find I was getting a lot less screen on time than other phones. In my testing, you'll get around 2-3 to three hours on a normal day's use before the battery gives up the ghost. Mercifully, the DTEC 50 does support quick charging, although it doesn't include a quick charger in the box, which is a bit of a strange omission. When charging, BlackBerry have also included a bar on the side of the phone to show you how much charge you have too. To round off, I'll just say that the mid-range market for phones is quickly becoming a hyper-competitive market. You've got some excellent contenders out there from the likes of Moto, Huawei, OnePlus and even Samsung, and the BlackBerry is sitting right in the middle of all of them. So you can get a lot more phone for your money if you want, but if security matters more to you or your business above all, then perhaps the BlackBerry is worth considering. Those front-facing speakers are always a very welcome sight as well. On the not-so-good side, battery life could be better, and there's no quick charger in the box, which is just weird, and the performance might not be enough for some of you. So that just about rounds us up on the DTEC 50. Thanks for watching this review, and if you've enjoyed it, pop a little thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one.